Thin people aren't allowed to listen to Lizzo. Let us fat people have one thing. Can you just imagine Lizzo's reaction when she finds out people are saying not to listen to her? It's safe to say that most companies have a sexual harassment policy in place. But it would be awesome if companies would also implement no diet or body talk policies. Now that would be a safe place to walk. Run Turtle Run replied, they complain about patriarchy and capitalism controlling their lives. Yet they want to control what other people say, do, or eat. Liz with the dreads added, No body talk! Ew, she needs to eat a sandwich! As the anti-diet movement grows in popularity, we're going to see more and more people trying to co-opt it and twist it to fit their profitable agendas. This is just a reminder that anyone who claims to be against diet culture, but is also selling weight loss, is full of poop. Not a fish you can catch, replied. So I looked at her website. Her online courses, one easy payment of $479 for each. How did the world of humans survive before it knew about calories? Easy, because people were able to eat what they wanted and needed to keep them alive and satisfied. Calories are a fad. The first few thousand years of our existence prove that. Intrepid Snowball replied, I'm genuinely laughing out loud at the thought of Paleolithic man eating whatever he wanted to feel satisfied. Like it was literally the Flintstones, with a woolly mammoth in a McDonald's hat handing out pterodactyl burgers. Keket added, Didn't you learn about Homo erectus discovering the M&M's bush? The fat tax on clothing is a penalty charged to fat people because the fashion industry built all their processes around not clothing us. It doesn't matter what justification that someone is using for charging more to fat people for the same clothes, because the actual solution here is incredibly simple, and it's easy to implement because it's what they're already doing for so-called straight sizes, which is to take the cost of each size and average it across all sizes so that everyone pays the same amount for the same piece of clothing. Fair is fair, and just like a size 0, 0, 5, 10, or 14 should, and do, all pay the same price, so should people who are sizes above that. It's time for people who happen to be smaller to stop feeling entitled to more and cheaper clothing than those who happen to be larger, and it's time for those selling clothing to stop penalizing us financially as part of their process of no longer excluding us. Without lamps there'd be no light, replied. This is the same Reagan Chastain who shills t-shirts on her blog and charges more for the larger sizes. Your brain may say lose weight while your body wants to grow. Trust your body, always trust your body. Calorie Free Soda replied. Your brain may say get up and go to work while your body wants to stay in bed. Always trust your body. Parents, you can opt your child out of BMI assessments at school, any lessons on eating disorders, nutrition, etc. I'm just gonna stop her there. You're gonna opt your kids out of learning about nutrition? So you just actively hate your children? Is it intuitive eating when you eat seven Krispy Kreme donuts? I really wanted them. Can't say I was hungry, but really wanted them. Should I have set a limit to how many I should eat? I think you did right. How did you feel? Bogdan replied, that ain't intuitive eating. Tara 3 added, we should call it chasing diabetes or slow painful word redacted by YouTube or just a complete lack of self-control. Lit Girl further added, going with that last one right there, or if you really want to be clever, Intuitive eating, which happens when someone surrenders completely to an animal instinct that the modern world has made it ridiculously easy to pamper. I feel really bad because I didn't mean to engage in diet culture. I worked very hard to love and accept my very large body and be proudly in Finifat, but in the last year I lost five teeth and simply can't afford to keep going that way. Disability won't cover implants. Dentist was serious saying I just had to stop all sodas and stopped having candy bars because it hurt my front teeth. I lost 25 pounds and can't deal with the guilt of doing this to myself intentionally. 
Dentists are also medical professionals. Be careful of their inherent anti-fat bias. I'm so sorry. If losing weight was really as simple and straightforward as they claim, we wouldn't still be talking about it. If all it really took was willpower, if it really was just eat less and move more forever. But the truth is it's not simple, it's not straightforward, it's not even necessarily healthy. Our appetites fight back, our bodies fight back, for good reason. Our bodies adjust, we have internal regulation systems, we have weight set ranges, and we are not all meant to be thin. And even all the willpower in the world can't rewire our body's will to survive. And this isn't even mentioning the fact that even if it was simple, it still would be inherently disordering to undereat and to be such a fat phobic culture. Summadrop replied, Even if it was as simple as that, I refuse to do it because fat phobia. At least they're willing to admit that in the event they're spewing BS, they'll never try the alternative. Now we can officially write this person off as a lost cause. Type ASS hole added. Also, like, temporary undereating is not disordered. Like, as long as you aren't consistently undereating forever and by a huge amount, if you're just eating at a small and temporary deficit until you don't have excess fat, then it's way more normal than to eat yourself into immobility. So, LMAO. When will it be illegal for a doctor to weigh you? I don't see why it matters, and the number of people it doesn't bother for one reason or another seems like probably very, very, very statistically small. Give us a break. Huckster replied, Man, as a 5 foot 11 and a half dude, I'm offended that they take my height. Now that it's in my medical records, I can't put that I'm 6 feet tall in my dating profile. Now I'll never get a girlfriend, and I feel ashamed at all the doctors laughing behind my back at the fact I'll never be a real man. This blatant heightism must stop. How dare they measure my height? And while we're at it, I'm claustrophobic and have big arms. How dare they take my blood pressure? I find it so offensive that they take objective, value-neutral measurements and then tell me that scientifically, that neutral statistic is endangering me. They're doctors. They should be able to magically give me a clean bill of health no matter how much crap I shovel into my body. Anti-Apocalypse added, Half the rank and file FAs out there. Whatever, manlet. Get back to us when you grow a couple of inches and have the washboard abs that are suitable for goddesses like us. Hair flip. We can't just be anti-diet because diets don't work. We need to be anti-diet even if diets did work because fat bodies are magical and we need them in this world. Bento replied, Yeah, I had a fat body once. It magically made me pre-diabetic. How many times have you ate cookies and immediately felt guilty after? When you're stuck in the mindset of labeling food as either good or bad, it can be very easy to slip into negative emotions when eating something bad. But food has no morality. Of course, some foods are more nutrient dense than others, but all food have a purpose in our diet. When you begin eating intuitively, some fears can arise such as, but I won't be able to stop eating the bad food because that's all I will want. Nope. Intuitive eating is about removing the external food rules around what, when, and how to eat. It's about finding foods that make you feel good, but are also satisfying. When you give yourself unconditional permission to eat all foods, the novelty and excitement of foods you would previously restrict wears off. That strong desire to eat all food will fade. But you have to trust the process. Taritha gives us a counterpoint. I only feel bad when I eat cookies because I eat the whole box and feel sick. That's not because cookies are bad. It's because I'm broken. The novelty obviously never wore off, since I never stopped in the 15 years I've been buying my own groceries. I actually don't think someone's anti-capitalism is anything, unless they're a fat activist. Diet culture is the purest expression of late capitalism I've ever seen. It's an industry worth billions that sells hunger. It is consuming without satiety, but you won't see most get that. 
Book Hermit replied, Here I thought giving into every craving, affected by every advertisement for food, and distracting yourself from life with foods that provide instant gratification and entertainment, while eating yourself into disability, immobility, and dependency, had more of a late capitalist vibe to it. It's tough to seize the means of production when you take three tries to get off the couch. Elysiant added, don't forget Big Pharma, profiting from your preventable, in many cases, conditions like type 2 diabetes, heart disease, chronic pain, etc. by selling you drugs that will temporarily alleviate your symptoms or delay your death by a few years. Oh, and also paying doctors and government regulatory agencies to tell you eating tons of sugar and bread is fine. A good friend of mine is a minor influencer now. She's overweight? N no, obese and documenting her body positivity journey to health with an alcohol-free lifestyle and clean eating and training for a marathon. She has a decent number of followers. It's all lies. She had tequila and cheesecake for dinner last night. She texted me pics. She jogs four miles a week on a treadmill, but she'll take a pic out of her car window on the way to the gym with a caption, nothing like running with the sunrise, implying she was running 10 miles outdoors. I hope she doesn't post her macros but they're closer to 3,000 a day than the 1,800 she says is her goal. She texts me that, too. She edits her body photos. I asked her about being dishonest in her inspirational health Insta, and she just does not care. Unrelated to the topic, but I'm grabbing the opportunity here. Is she doing it for money? Would you know how much she earns from this? I'm assuming the act is money-driven, although it can also be popularity, but that won't buy me donuts, and I assume that's a lower priority. She doesn't make money, but likes the idea that people are following her. Terrible, lying advice. It's relevant to the topic here. My point was that OP is comparing some influencers who might be totally lying about their stats. The question about genetics is still a good one, but Instagram isn't a good starting point for any sort of diet or health information. Anti-Apocalypse replied, As the angry bald man says, Instagram, where fitness goes to die. I could really use some support right now. I thought I had gotten free of the dieting mindset, but recently I have found my health declining, blood pressure and weight rising, and I have been sick every few weeks. Anyone have any non-diet advice to lower blood pressure? I feel like I'm drowning here. Smiley face. OCR Amazon replied, there are none so blind as those who will not see. So for girl added, they might go blind if that diabetes goes unchecked. From r slash relationship advice, I'm a 35 year old female with a 650 pound sister who's 35 as well. She has one foot in the grave and nothing will make her stop. Last month, my sister had a heart attack. This was after a small stroke she had the year before too. She managed to call 911 in time and was taken to the hospital, so her life was saved, but these two life-threatening events have changed absolutely nothing. She still refuses to move. She spends most of the day, night, in bed, almost completely immobile at this point. I try to get her to take just a few steps in her room, and she refuses. Me, my brother, 30 years old, and our parents, about 60s, have done literally everything we can think of. She won't walk won't entertain the idea of talking to a therapist, doesn't read any of the information I sent her about healthy diets, never sees a doctor except when she's been in imminent danger of death, eats nothing but utter garbage, fast food, and junk snacks, and basically has sat on her butt for years collecting unemployment doing absolutely nothing besides eating nonstop, sleeping, and surfing the internet. The only people in her life besides us are the older couple in their 50s who live across the street from her. They're who she calls whenever she wants food. It used to be me as I live in the same area, but a couple of years ago I stopped after the realization I was essentially helping her kill herself. Also back then, she could still get to the door to get delivery from drivers. Now she can't. My parents also used to live nearby, but my dad now has early onset dementia and they've moved to be closer to the resources and care facility he needs. My mom even went back to work to try to fund some of this. So neither of them is in a position to do much, practically speaking, especially with getting older and their own health problems. My brother is married with a kid, and they live a few hours away. It's really just me and her neighbors. 
I have tried so hard to get the neighbors to understand they need to stop enabling her. It's difficult because I think my sister has become like a surrogate daughter to them. They've lost their own daughter unexpectedly when she was 28. They have the keys to the house. I'm glad there's someone there in case my sister needs help, but a lot of what they do is the opposite of helping. For example, I've tried to say I really appreciate them wanting to take care of her, but for her health, could they cook some healthy meals to share with her instead of always ordering whatever greasy fried takeout she wants? I've offered to give them some money for groceries. They accepted, but ended up just using it to buy more of the fast food and sweets. When I confronted them, the wife says my sister starts having a panic attack if either of them tries to say no to her. The wife described one time when she had to rush over because my sister was crying saying she couldn't breathe and was going to take a knife and just end it all. Nothing would calm her down except a certain food item. So she called her husband while he was at work, who then picked it up for her. I don't know what to do. I can't control these people or always be there to monitor what my sister is doing. I got engaged this summer and this is starting to wear on my fiance, understandably. She's afraid I'm ruining my own mental health by stressing about my sister. It's not entirely wrong. I just don't know what else to do. She is my twin and we've always been close until she started living like this. Just throwing all care of herself out the window and letting herself pile on hundreds of pounds. I don't understand it. She won't explain it. Never has she given a single reason why she continues to keep doing this. Her body is probably destroyed beyond recovery at this point, and it's just a matter of time until it gives out completely. She recently started needing the neighbor's help to sit up and position a bucket so she can pee off the edge of the bed. She constantly has sores and cracks from her skin being stretched to breaking. Also, she can't wash by herself either, because she's gotten too big to reach all areas of her body. My brother and his family come to visit every couple months, but it's a lot for them with a baby. My parents visit when they can, but my dad doesn't always remember who we are. And my mom seems to have reached a point where she's so devastated over seeing my sister like this that she kind of emotionally shuts down. Both me and my mom went to the ER after she had her heart attack. Her weight was found out to be 658 pounds. While she was in recovery, we got to hear the doctor say to her face that she didn't almost die. She is dying and will be dead by the end of the year if she keeps going like she has been. We just don't know what to do. She will not even talk about her weight, let alone try to eat less better. She ate completely normally until her mid-twenties, maybe. This has not been a lifelong issue in the making. She's never attempted a single thing to lose any weight. She thinks everything is fine. According to her, her stroke and heart attack, plus leg pain, joint problems, sleep apnea, etc., aren't because of her obesity. She doesn't consider herself obese either, for what it's worth. We are watching her die in slow motion before our eyes. And I'm desperate for any strategy to make her care that we somehow haven't thought of yet. Has anyone ever been through this with a loved one? How did you deal with it? I feel completely helpless and alone, so even someone being able to relate would mean a lot. What can my family do to save her life? Hedenreich replied. I've had, still have, a similar situation with my mother. I totally relate to what you're saying. No matter what I've said to my mother about her weight, nothing changed. I told her that one day she would have grandchildren, and that she would want to be around to see them. Well, turned out that she is still around to see them. But due to her weight issue, she lost the use of her legs, likely due to diabetes, which she had to take medication for, and never did, and never did any follow-up. It is painful for me to watch my mother do what she has been doing for a very long time. I've had to go out and get my mother food, get her wash done all while she was wheelchair bound. Being bedridden and having a pee bucket are all too familiar to me. I've had to take her to a doctor. Trying to load her into a car was always very difficult and heartbreaking. I wish I had some magic set of words for you to say to your sister to make her realize what she's doing to herself and the family and those nice people who are her neighbors. You should worry about you. Maybe talk to a psychologist about how you're feeling about this and how to cope. Being fat will catch up with you eventually. I totally forgot that being thin would make me immortal. Thank goodness you told me or I might have died someday. And as long as you're predicting the future, would it kill you to give me some lottery numbers? Stellar Blender replied, Hey man, take an umbrella, it's gonna rain later. Ooh, are you some kind of psychic? If so, you're good at predicting the future. Why didn't you warn us about 9-11, huh? Utterly dumbfounded. That's what I thought. No response. 
But let's go back to one other thing that Reagan said. I read on a website that we're about to experience another ice age, and without fat stores to keep you alive and warm, you're absolutely going to freeze to death. Even if another ice age comes, we're not going to forget how to use a furnace. The CDC is wrong about being fat. It won't kill you. It's not an epidemic, and it does not need to be cured. Run, Turtle Run replied. The CDC is also wrong about Ebola. It's because they are racist, patriarchal, capitalist Ebola-phobes. I, for one, am an Ebola activist. There's no proof that anyone has actually died from it. They probably died from trying to cure it and defying their body's Ebola set point. And people without Ebola die all the time. Stupid CDC, what do you know? Beyond the sheer arrogance of thinking we get to judge and comment on other people's bodies, it's wild that we think we have an intimate knowledge of someone else's health status, potential medical conditions, and personal worth based entirely on their body size, shape, and skin color. When you're concerned about a friend or relative's health, here are some things to ask about instead of weight. Sleep amount and quality, stress level, electrolytes and trace minerals. There's more, but let's see the comments about electrolytes. Huckster replied, Yo, homie, your electrolytes good, man? I noticed lately that you looking like your trace minerals are low, playa. I'm convinced that your movements have been less joyful. By the way, man, you've been oppressed this week? I'm here for you. Yeah, no, I'm not having this conversation with my boys. And they better not have it with me. Tell me I'm fat if you have to. I know it. I'm working on it. But the criticism is motivation for me, and that's a good thing. Semipa added, Thanks for asking about my electrolytes, man. I truly appreciate you unpacking my fat phobia and not triggering me with diet culture propaganda. You know, I've been feeling a little oppressed lately, now that you mention it. Hey, you want to head over to the gym later for some gentle stretches at a slow, joyful saunter around the track? If you're ever thinking of trying to lose weight for any reason at all, please know this. We just don't have any safe or permanent way to shrink people's bodies. Weight loss efforts almost always lead to weight cycling, which is a health risk in and of itself, regardless of BMI. And yes, that includes all the popular fad diets as well as sensible lifestyle changes. It includes the program your mom swears by, and the totally different plan your coworker raves about. None of it works long term, and all of it is more likely to harm your health. Not only that, but weight stigma is another independent health risk factor, regardless of BMI. And guess what happens when you're told you need to lose weight, even in a gentle way? It increases your levels of weight stigma and puts your health at risk. Ocelot replied, Your weight stigma levels rise? What? Semipa added, Once you earn enough weight stigma points to level up to weight stigma grandmaster, that's when the benefits start to roll in. Hot boyfriends, extra seats on airplanes, deference and adoration from the other oppressed groups, all can be yours if you work for it through cultivating weight stigma.